So, Pura, um, it's been a mm-hmm. wonderful time, I think, for you. And I think it's great that we are finally getting to do this uh, wonderful chat. Uh, I've been wanting to interview you, actually, for quite some time. I mean, I've been watching your journey since... Like I'd probably say since Rock On, actually, that was my first sort of tryst with your work. And in fact, the film has now celebrated 13 years as well. So uh, congratulations on that. And thank you for joining me on Film Show Me. Thank you. Thank you, Anuj. It was, in fact, when you wrote to me on Instagram, um, I was I was quite uh, intrigued by a Indian journalist. Uh, and I think uh, you, you've established a nice name for yourself here in the UK, interviewing uh, artists from India. So I was, I was quite impressed by that. Oh, thank you so much. That is, that is so, so humbling and so lovely to hear. Thank you so much for that, Pura. But I think, you know, genuinely, it's been quite a busy time for you. You know, you've had a lot of work coming your way. I think even Out of Love Season 2 as well, kind of released recently as well. So, uh, and the fact that, like I mentioned, you know, 13 years of Rock On, um, you know, so I, I guess it's been quite eventful for you, right? Like, how would you just sort of describe your mind space and uh, this current state that you're in <laughs> at the moment? Well, um, it's 13 years of Rock On and you mentioned at the beginning of our interview that you started noticing my work really from Rock On. But I was uh, already acting a good 10 years before Rock On. Um, one of the first shows I did in my life was a show called Hip Hip Hooray, which was uh, huge in India. Um, probably in the UK, you didn't, uh, Z was not so big then. This is in the late 90s. And um, ZTV got popular later here, I believe, in the 2000s. Um, for the within the Indian diaspora, so uh, I think uh, uh, the journey to answer your question, the journey from then to now is, uh, I mean, back then I didn't imagine I wanted to be an actor even, um, and 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 some of the people I've worked with and some of the things I've done in front of the camera, I wouldn't have imagined. I just sort of jokingly said, "Wow, I want to be a, a part of something. I want to do this." And now you to see it unfold in the last twenty-two years of acting is quite is quite a lot of fun. For example, I mean, uh, since you spoke about Rock On, I remember when I saw Dil Chata, I never imagined I would be in a film. Uh, and I mean, of course, uh, Farhan started his acting career with Rock On. Uh, but uh, at that point of time, I was just excited to be with the director of Dilchatai on the set of Rock On. You know? <laughs> so that was that was a that was a wonderful experience. So things like that, you know, I've had quite a few opportunities. Uh, uh, luckily in my life, uh, touch wood, uh, people have admired uh, people's work who have, who's have, uh, whose work I've admired, and then I've had opportunities to work with them, and I feel quite privileged because of that. Right, right. Well, I think that's wonderful to hear, Purab. And, you know, I'm glad you mentioned as well Hip Hip Hooray because that's, of course, what got the ball rolling for your career. And um, we will be coming on to, uh, you know, your background and everything. But I think because, like I said, you know, Rock On has, is celebrating 13 years and it is still a very, very popular film. And I think your character, KD, you know, still has a very special place in people's hearts. Um, uh, and again, like I said, so does the film. So, at that point in life, I mean, you know, when it did happen, because it was an icebreaker for you of sorts, right, in that sense. So uh, what significance did doing the film have on you as a person, um, especially when it comes to, you know, the idea of maintaining friendships and loyalty in life? Um, uh, well, that's two separate questions, actually. <laughs> uh, so, so I think to answer the first one of what significance the film has for me. Uh, well, I think it was the first time uh, you know, I've had a few landmarks in my life. So there was Hippie Pure, for example, what I started off with. Hippie Pure was a bunch of lots of people, but you still had to prove yourself beyond that gang of being a part of Hippie Pure. And after Hippie Pure, I got into hosting a lot of television shows. Uh, and I did. A, uh, I was working for Channel V, which is the, you know, uh, the big music channel of the early 2000s in India. And um, I, I was I was doing travel shows for them and having a party really with them for eight years. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so that was that was a big chunk of my life. Uh, in the midst of that, I did my brother Nikhil, which sort of oh, showed people or showcased people an acting talent. So many people started looking at me and saying, "Oh, he's an actor. And he can really act, and he's he's proving to to do something uh, beyond hosting shows and beyond his hip hip hooray image." Uh, so my brother Nikhil did that for me. Uh, what Rock On did for me was the first time I had any kind of success in a film, you know, any kind of a commercial sort of uh, tension where a large mass audience, you prove yourself in that ground, you know, 
and as you said kd's character was loved immensely i mean till date people call me kd so uh, in fact on the set i am in on right now um, all the you know there's a young crew of young crew of directors and dops and these guys are work were kids when rock on was made you know this is rock on is 13 years ago so these guys yeah. were like a uh, rock on's fan following was was anywhere if you were between 11 and 18 or 20 you were a big rock on fan you know so those guys are now all in their 30s and <laughs> mid 30s and late 30s and they are like wow kd from rock on so <laughs> so that, that that film has been quite significant in that sense and i think also uh people uh, once you once you gain any kind of commercial uh attention or commercial success then producers uh, are willing to take chances and risks with you so if you remember there was a time even after rock on where there were a lot of films that came where people were willing to take a risk in in uh, in casting me as the lead right. you know and uh so your career goes through those kind of graphs up and down and rock on definitely was 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 a high point in terms of um, uh, significance to old friendships coming back i'm all about that if you go back to uh, if you if you pick up my phone and you see the last few friends i've called on my phone it'll be friends that i know from school and friends that i know from college um, all my friends are like really you know go back years and years and years so um uh, we long for reunions like that you know my friends and i we always planning holidays now we have kids and we have families and um and we have work busy schedule so you make a lot of friends on work and while you're working with them it's all you know you're having great time with them but somewhere i think at the back i keep going back to uh, my childhood friends hanging out with them uh, meeting them reuniting with them going on family holidays with them you know planning now with our kids and all together so uh, for me um, those relationships are are strong and hold strong so uh, to answer your question about what significance that that aspect of rock on had for me is huge huge mm. Mm. oh lovely <laughs> and i'm sure it must have definitely uh may ex- expose you a lot more to rock music as well i mean as obvious as it sounds i'm sure you uh, quite connected. no actually I, I, you'll be surprised that i i when i was in college and i was much younger i listened to some pretty heavy metal stuff you know oh, so rock on is quite pop was quite pop rock for me for my liking actually uh, i mean the music is great the music is there's nothing wrong with pop rock but uh, it, it, and and shankar hasan loy are fantastic uh, music directors i in fact particularly enjoyed the music of rock on 2 i have to say i really liked yeah. the music of rock on 2 it's a pity the film didn't do that well as the first one did but the music is just amazing of rock on 2 uh and rock on one also i mean all those songs still they ring in your head and they they great songs uh but yeah i mean uh i was listening to a lot of gnr and uh, metallica and uh, uh iron maiden when i was much younger you know so um, yeah wonderful and i think what you said as well i love the songs of i mean both the rock ones of course have an amazing soundtrack i think for me i love ishq mastana from the second rock on and urjare i think these are the two mm. songs which even now mm. i still listen to and i think that just goes to show show of what an iconic film and what an iconic sort of work mm. that is so i think kudos goes yeah. to you and the entire team there for that yeah. but um so just rewinding back and speaking to your sort of uh acting career which was obviously and you know your sort of first sort of foray onto the screen which was with hip hop ray on ztv and that was during what the 90s and the late 90s and i think the landscape of entertainment was completely different than what it is now uh, of course but you know when you made five that- channels out of which one hindi one was hindi <laughs> yeah exactly and that's what you- india was at that point of time <laughs> that is very true i agree um but when you made this decision uh, to sort of enter this industry I mean what appealed to you the most about actually choosing this field in particular Well um you know I come from a family of uh, of uh, filmmakers and and producers and directors and I always never wanted to be a part of this business <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was always staring away and wanting to do something different and and uh, uh, when I got my first job uh hippie pure which uh, is another story altogether which i can tell you some other time of how i got it or you there's enough i've said it enough to online so you, you can find that story yeah, yeah. yeah but um when i finally agreed and decided to do hippie pure the the one single most driving factor in it was that i could stop taking money from my father pocket money from my father 
and 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 it was not much it was 5000 rupees a month <laughs> it's like 50 quid wow <laughs> 50 quid a month but at that point of time this is in 97 50 quid went a long way in india you know uh, yeah yeah, yeah. Month. so so it was 50 quid a month uh, it was um, it was 1250 rupees and i think the the pound was also not so high i think the pound was in the, in the 60s or the 70s at that point of time so maybe it was more than uh, 50 quid it was about 70 80 quid about the 100 quid i don't know but basically it was very little money and uh, uh, and and it just it was a big upgrade from the pocket money i was getting because i was still a college kid i was just like 16 and a half 17 17 and a half years old and i was still going to college and um, living with a family and you know so suddenly i said oh now i have my own money and i can do all do with it so that was that was a big driver that was a big driver to wow. start doing it and i always did my whole ex- my whole time with hippie pure with channel v uh, right up to my brother nikhil was never it was never like this is what i want to do for the rest of my life it was just like wow the money is getting better from 5000 it became 25000 from 25000 it became a few lakhs and then it went on and on so <laughs> i mean uh, after uh, you you just sort of um, you uh, i mean till, till about 2005 till i did my brother, my brother nikhil it was just because the money was getting better and better and then when i did my brother nikhil it was the first time i got hit by the power of the medium um because a i really enjoyed shooting that film i mean it was so much fun but at that time i was having a lot of fun with lots of things i was shooting so yeah. it was it was no uh, i mean it was no different from anything else i was doing but it was fun and when it released the impact it had and the kind of film that it was and when i saw it myself and i was like wow you know this is what cinema can really do that's when i that's when i understood uh, or recognized and was thankful for a gift i had you know till then it was just like oh right let's have fun let's have fun and then i realized okay you know i I've, i've got something here and i got to make something interesting out of it you know i can't just let it waste away so uh, so that's when i sort of consciously made a decision this is what i want to do and this is the career i want to take and 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 years where i'm going to work and now it's it's uh, 15 16 years since that day since my brother nikhil was made you know so it's was yeah. 2005 and um, i look back and i and i mean i'm I'm generally very happy to be on a on a shooting set. I understand it well. I love it. Uh, sometimes, of course, on a bad day, the pre- <laughs> production is not getting things right. It can be a pain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, most of the time, I'm, I I know it so well, you know. So I go around in a set and I and I feel at home. Really, I love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yeah. I absolutely agree. And passion is the only thing that really keeps us alive. I think nowadays as well in that sense too. So yeah, yeah. definitely second that. Um, but you know. put up throughout your career what i've also realized is that you know you've always done roles which are very dynamic but yet real every time i've seen you sort of play these characters there's always this sense of solid like form- formidable presence that i see and you always it's your smile as well that you have it's very 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 heartwarming you know even if you're playing an evil character your smile will still <laughs> probably like cement a position i was waiting for that to come <laughs> yeah literally even if you play like a bad character that will still like cement a sort of presence in our heart and i think that just goes yeah. to show what a natural you really are on screen um but i think to what extent has a uh, realism and i guess the sort of choice of work always been a conscious deciding factor for you especially when it comes to you know realistic characters or characters which pretty much exist within the fabric of our society. Mm. I think uh, I I've, I've had that fight I, to be honest with you Anuj I've had that fight because especially when you come from the Indian film industry and you see the kind of films that uh, we make um it, it's mostly dream cinema you know the yeah. big ones the yeah, big commercial yeah. ones yeah it's you want to and 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 I I have nothing against it I think it's great I love some of that cinema myself I mean a good bollywood masala film really gets gets me ticking you know I really enjoy it and I imagine myself you know as an actor you imagine yourself in different roles and i imagine i've imagined myself doing uh, doing films like hum dil de chuke sanam and all of that you know so you 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 uh, i mean i do i have to say i do enjoy watching commercial cinema immensely and uh, uh, but you know india is many indias uh, i grew up in an india and the person i am and who i am the kind of um, what appeals to me really as cinema Uh, has changed over time you know so sometimes and it also depends on the mood of what you want to do uh, very often uh, uh, when you're reading a script 
you are really thinking of yourself in that part you know and you're thinking that mm. it's something does it make sense to you and you're really judging it from that and i haven't i, I won't say i've made the best decisions i've made some terrible decisions also in my life and i made some very good decisions also in my life and um uh, i think it starts off with just imagining yourself playing that part and whether you can do justice to it so i don't uh, always i mean very very often like i've i've sat with scripts and mulled over them uh and they actually quite i found them quite bad the first time i've read it and i've been like oh god this script's terrible but i like to always give it a second thought a second doubt because i feel like there might be an audience for this kind of film you know and if there's an audience for this kind of film i have to try and find so i, I try and invest time to try and find a connect with the script or confine if i connect with the character and uh, sometimes it just doesn't happen sometimes it happens and then you realize that your first instinct was right and it was a really shit or crap film yeah. <laughs> and and you're now a part of it so now you have to like <laughs> you, have to, you have to write through that also so um, uh, these are these are decisions i mean I, I, as i said because because i never had a game plan from day one of saying that hey this is what i want to do and i've chalked it all out and this is what i'm going to do i've really learned over the last 20 years in the business you know i keep learning all the time now right now i'm learning things you know i i even now i think oh maybe i want to do this kind of work and i want to do this kind of work and i've done this now so now i need to do something to sort of up from there um and you 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 just uh, after a point if you want to act and you want to be in a set then you just want to get into any part and like really give your best to it you know and mm-hmm. and be a part of stories that people want to see at the end of the day because now it's not about the money anymore it's not about uh, uh it's not even about the fame anymore you know but strangely mm-hmm. it's about you wanting people to watch what you've done sure because that's where your hard work's going so that's you want people to be impacted people to be entertained people to be uh to to see your work and say wow you know i really like that job or i really connected with that character of yours uh that's yeah. what i crave for more more than anything else and you try and f- then you know get scripts and get uh stories or that that sort of move you and and mm. you feel for and then you hope that extends to the audience watching it also sure so i think um like you mentioned what i found quite interesting here is about you know where you have an instinct about a certain script or a character and then you kind of realize that, oh no that you know it's not good enough but then you have to stick with it anyway but has there mm. been a time when um you really kind of didn't like something in the first place but then you kind of let it go but then it also worked for someone else so it worked otherwise has there ever been that sort of decisions which you've kind of regretted of letting go ever in your life i have i i have regretted a couple of decisions in my life and i can't say i've not regretted anything i have regretted a couple of decisions in my life i have to say that they both were good decisions in terms of the projects that they were because those projects didn't work out they were really and those roles and those roles weren't great and so i i i probably said no for good reason uh, i didn't feel the connect and mm. but i also i also feel like i i mean this is <laughs> i guess it's my own my own ego that i that i feel like i add a certain value to a character if i play it so oh, i feel like so i feel like that character could have come out more if i had played it yeah of <laughs> course they, so they went on to cast <laughs> so i mean uh, i mean uh, so yeah i mean to answer your question a yes i do regret um, many things i mean you regret all the time saying oh i wish i'd done that i wish i'd not done that i don't cry over it i don't i don't wonder about it too much uh, i mean there were reasons why i made that decision and and i'm sh- and as i said every decision i've made and those swims have gone on to be made and i've seen them and i'm mean like oh 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 <laughs> but i didn't do it um but at the same time uh, i also feel that um uh, it's not naturally human to sort of make those decisions. yeah it's naturally human especially when you're learning along the way you have to make some mistakes and, and pick up from yeah. there and move on and uh, the fact you've been around for so long and <laughs> you know something else will come along <laughs> yeah i know absolutely and i think 
yeah. since we're talking about decisions here and often um when i speak with actors especially a few of my actor friends in mumbai as well whenever i speak with them you know i i also realize that in their life and i think with anyone with any pretty much profession but i think specifically with the acting profession you know there comes a phase when uh you know one waits for that particular ambitious role or that role which they've always dreamt of or they've always uh aspired to basically pursue mm. um mm. have you ever faced that sort of phase in your life yet a lot a lot i especially when i was younger um you know the one thing that uh, i have accepted now um uh, and not very recently a few years back i think about 10 years back i accepted this is that when you have been around already and you've done work and you've been around for as long as i've been around people know who you are mm. and uh, sure. they also sort of relate you from every last performance you've done after out of love i started getting i've started getting a lot of negative kind of role uh, calls <laughs> <laughs> before that i was getting a chocolate boy role call yeah yeah so, you know, the support is very interesting yeah yeah industries like there are very few people are alliance and take risks and cast you as something that's completely out of the box you know uh the the first time i did a negative role actually was for avara pan in mohit suri's film and and yeah, uh, i also yeah. was surprised when mohit told me i wanted to play that part i also was surprised i said how come you calling me for a negative part i got really excited i was like yeah damn excited no one looks at me as a negative part so <laughs> very few people who take that chance they they always see you in the same light that is your last project and which is great because there's also extensions of of you know sometimes you play a part and you feel like oh like for example avar apan i felt like there was so much more of that to give in other projects mm-hmm. and i still i still haven't been cast as that kind of character again i'm out of love is is slightly negative and i'm doing some other negative part also now in the f- near future you will see here you will see um but uh, uh, you know you you want to explore as an actor now mm. i'm not looking at the specific role and oh i've accepted in 10 years back i probably did this was when i accepted the fact that people now know me you know and they are not i can't i think when you are when you're new or you're fresh then you can wait for the perfect launch or the perfect part to be presented um and sometimes you see this in many actors that they get have these huge impressions made on their first project and then they're playing that character for the rest of their life you and know? it's very easy in every to get film it's yeah. very easy to get they're playing that like- character for the rest of their life i mean and sometimes that character takes them to stardom you know and then they have to play that character because people are not willing to accept them as any other part yes. so uh, i i feel lucky that way that i've had such i mean i i look back at even parts i've played a few months back and i look different and i feel different and i i'm able to play some, com- something completely different so um i think i'm quite lucky like that you know to have had such an opportunity and such a range i mean if you just google um even just the films i've done forget about now now it's of course web series is the is a new space everybody is jumping into and uh, getting yeah. a lot of work in but um, if you just look at even just my film work you'll see I I look quite different in in every one of yeah. them you know and I and I take pride in that actually not that you weren't before but you look very suave I must say you look very handsome as <laughs> well so I think I'd just like to sort of tell you that <laughs> so, yeah um but I think also you know like you rightly mentioned and I think I'm going to add these two uh sort of notions together is the fact that in the Indian film industry especially I feel like there's this whole notion of you know actors getting bracketed to the roles that they're very popular for and them getting an influx of offers which are there to that but at the same time now we've also got the digital renaissance which is you know like i said you know the digital platform boom has completely taken over india um and it's obviously allowing actors like yourself and many others to explore i guess different strands to their craft like never before as well so i guess now the fact that you do have uh the digital bloom happening how much of an awakening uh has it been for you and also do you kind of feel that because you've got this kind of digital space now to sort of explore yourself more do you feel that will really you know i guess be a savior for you from getting stereotyped and getting bracketed as an actor yeah absolutely absolutely i completely agree with you i think it's an opportunity for for lots of actors um and getting work i mean there's a lot of work to be honest it's a lot of work Uh, especially in india because um every 
every weekend is when initially there'll be a weekend release now so weekend release of a digital platform it seems like that at least <laughs> so <laughs> it's good actually yeah it's great i mean I'm, i'm i have to say it's 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 a really nice time for actors um and not only actors even directors i mean there's a there's a dearth for directors if you want to find a director in india right now to do some work it's impossible everyone's yeah. busy writers oh my god i mean who would have thought that india would now be cultivating writers they're cultivating writers you know before this before the digital boom time you never thought of writer writers were just called into sort of fill in uh, big actor egos you know yeah. now it's now they are writing content i mean it's a, it's a great time for writers it's a great time for producers you know so mm. there's a lot of work I- in india there's a lot of uh, exploration as you as you said because uh, i think many of them are trying to find their ground it's all new so they're putting in a lot of money to to fight to sort of create a mark and put a uh, content out there that people want to watch and get their audience in and uh, or get that subscription in more than anything else you know and once they have a subscription and then it's it's filling up the, the space to give them more content to keep watching so it's a really it's a very exciting time and and uh, and everyone's wanting to be different everyone want to try something new what sells what doesn't sell i think the creative teams of all these broadcasters are, are really being put on their toes and and then really having to squeeze every juice of creativity out of them to try and crack this you know and yeah. see how they get the big numbers in because india is a, such a huge audience you know and yeah. especially now with with through covid where the cinemas have been closed and now they opened again by with 50% capacity uh it's a it's a real challenge and i mean a challenge is an exciting time hmm wonderful now i i know you kind of mentioned this about you know about that whole when i said about the regrets part of 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 life and uh, all of that but you know um because obviously you have had a lot of great work emerge on the web as well how much of an awakening um has it been for you in terms of emotionally and i guess you know personality wise as well because i know you kind of mentioned it but i just wanted to expand further and get a bit more of a further comment on that what kind of uh, awakening in the sense yeah. uh, in terms of uh, as an actor uh, as a person emotionally hmm uh i don't know if it's a i mean you're getting more roles to explore with um i think as an actor you always uh, kind of grow with every role a part of you gets of course you give a, part, a large part of yourself to the to a character you're playing but you also take some things from a character that you're playing so i guess there's some <coughs> sorry there's some of that that happens hmm. um uh, and because you're playing now a lot more characters a lot more diverse characters there are times in my life for example um when rock on got made and it got so successful i was get in calls for a lot of uh, band based films and um, play a guitarist here and play a musician here and uh, and more than just a a musician also the emotion was the same you know of, um, of what kd was like a light go happy go lucky guy and you feel kind of stagnated you know uh feeling like oh god is this all i'm going to get now and this do i have to do it again and do i have to do it again and even in other characters they would ask you to get the same kind of feel in but now with with the ott platform i get suddenly called to play an a father of a 19 year old girl and i'm like have you seen me without my beard i look like a boyfriend and they're like no we do prosthetics we do prosthetics on you and we make you look older than you are and we color everything white and i'm like wow all right okay that sounds like fun <laughs> you know uh oh oh play a cheating husband like in out of love which is of course dr foster if you're in the uk you know dr foster so yeah, yeah. um so uh, there's that and uh, i i think i think it's it's just a, the challenges are are more exciting now with in terms of roles and because they're more diverse and people are pushing the envelope a bit with with characters and with stories then that makes it more exciting for actors sure sure and i think also you know since we're talking about life generally you know i feel like with the hindi film industry it things are heightened so much more and i feel like um cutthroat is a huge understatement when it when it comes to describing this industry and i know that it's 
it's a lot more that goes on, you know, for getting a certain role and for getting a certain film as well. There's a lot of machineries, there's a lot of decisions that that drive that. But I guess mm-hmm. when it comes to you as a person, um, when it comes to success, dejection, failure in life, what keeps you mentally strong? I was just thinking about you know because this the first time you have a disappointment you're like oh god okay I'm really I'm really hurt and I'm really bad and the second time it happens you're like oh god not again the third time it happens you're like all right I can deal with this and the fourth time it stops affecting you you just become thick skin <laughs> <laughs> actually it's true so, so just to just to just to put it into context from my brother Nick Hill which happened in 2005 I had huge expectations with everything that came out <laughs> <laughs> I imagine everything to be the biggest blockbuster in the world. I thought I'd arrived after my brother Nikhil basically. So so then I was and and then you you sort of live life, you know, and you just sort of life matures you, hardens you and and and, and teaches you how to uh, uh you make mistakes as I pointed out earlier, you regret them, you learn from them. Uh you have failures, you fall, you get up and you go again. um and and that's what i believe in that if you every time you have a failure and every time you have um a, a bad decision you learn from it and it makes you make a better decision the next time and it makes you do something or work on something better the next time if you look at any any successful person in the world and uh, they they've always had more failures than achievements you know so uh one has to one has to sort of uh just harden up and move on you know it's, yeah it's, it's, it's true sometimes it is as simple as that you've just got to you know i guess move on with life and try and yeah yeah you know, i had huge expectations i mean i did a film called jal in 2011 or 10 11 or something mm-hmm. and she was shot in it was shot in 10 11 but it released in 2014 and i put my life on hold for that film mm-hmm. i stopped everything i was doing i i stopped taking up work because i had huge massive expectations from that film that film released on the friday and by saturday morning it was out of the theaters and four years and three years of my life just went like that you know and i was like oh what happened there you know mm. and i suddenly like had to like gather myself pick up my bags and say okay what's going on i need to go back to i was living outside bombay so i need to go back to bombay and uh, mumbai and figure out you know what what have i done for three years <laughs> right they, they started forgetting me i uh, in 2014 i was i was already 16 years in the business and people were asking me what what's your name like who are you yeah and i was like fuck man let's go back you know it's like <laughs> sorry my my language but i mean that's what it felt like you know it felt mm-hmm. like so i've had a few of those in my life where there was huge expectations and uh, you imagined uh, the world to turn and and you start uh, in time you sort of kind of realize that you know what you actually have had those 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 expectations already fulfilled you're just not recognizing them or you're looking for something bigger all the time and you have to sort of just uh you just got to do well with everything you do and and sometimes it'll, it'll hit some extreme amount of highs like an airlift or like a like a rock on uh and sometimes you'll just ride on a sort of middle range graph which is fine that's all right too and sometimes it'll be really bad <laughs> and you just cross your fingers and hope something comes to cover it up in the future <laughs> and do you know what's really endearing for up is the fact that you know you you're so optimistic about it and you're so realistic about it and i ha- i i i can't been around too long been around too long on it <laughs> yeah i was going to literally say it seems like but ne kiya kya hasi sitam you know just to sort of summarize it it just seems like yeah. circumstances have really made you into this sort of mindset yeah, yeah. and have this attitude is that is that correct is that um, is my judgment yeah you know you know when i when i when i did rock on as i said there was a lot of uh, lead parts and two of the greatest films that i mean two of the uh, two superb films films i really believed in films i really i mean i know that if they had released they would have been huge successes um and and these are two films i signed as the, as the main lead so when you sign films like and with prominent filmmakers prominent producers prominent directors and and uh, you you kind of expect and make decisions with that in hand you know thinking so other bigger producers call you and say no i i'm doing this now you know so i can't 
to that mm. and and these two films one got shelved uh, the producer sort of collapsed basically he had massive release in it and that film shit got shelved and the second one the director died so oh, good lord so oh, yeah. yeah so i mean who, who would have imagined that you know i mean at a time when you're on your peak of your one of your peaks of your career you just suddenly get this whack whack yes like take that and then the other two films that you sort of also have are riding high on flop <laughs> so it's like i mean yeah. you could have made one or two bad decisions but four things going on so fate has something else planned for you and you, know, you just have to accept it and say all right i'll go that on is, with that <laughs> that is so true you know what would have i yeah. relate with that so much you know because yeah. sometimes naturally when things just happen they just fall into your lap aap zyada mehnat bhi nahi karte aur aapke matlab hisse mein aa jata hai wo cheez and i and i yeah. believe that i believe the universe really does reciprocate things the almighty does and but i think for you you definitely risen above it like a phoenix you know and i think it's wonderful to well, see after that all of that so 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 this is this these things these two films sh- shared uh one of course the director passed away and the second one uh, uh, the film got shelved or whatever happened with it um and then jal release and jal bombed and i was like sort of really heartbroken and then out of the blue i get a get a call to audition for sense8 yeah and, mm-hmm. and and then i audition for it and i just hear about okay there's a show sense8 i do the audition and i forget about it and a couple of months later i get a call saying the directors want to meet you and who are the directors the wachowski the wachowskis and i'm like yeah. what really <laughs> <laughs> they want to meet me <laughs> so uh yeah you just have to like sort of go on and 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 of course since it has been an amazing experience to have worked with them and and through that time um but i, yeah, I, I was not expecting it at all in, when when that call came i was really not expect, ex- expecting it Absolutely, and I'm really glad that you mentioned this because my next question was actually regarding that. So I'm going to use that to segue into the yeah, next yeah. question, actually, because you know I think it's wonderful that we're seeing finally seeing substantial Indian representation in the West. You know, yeah. it's, it's about high time, but I still think we have a long. I th- I, I, yeah, I think I think this. I I still feel it's a bit unfair. <laughs> Oh yeah, massively. I listen, Purab. That's a separate conversation you and I can yeah. literally have. Like, yeah. I have yeah. so many theories and so many concepts about this. Yeah. But that's a conversation we'll definitely have someday. But I think, yeah. but for now, concentrating on the positives, I think it's great that at least, chalo, kuch roles mil rahe hain, and we have yeah. our own people yeah. now yeah. pulling the shots, which is a change yeah. as well. And yeah. you did a fab job in Sensei. You and Tina were brilliant in the series. Um, I think it made me really happy okay. to see you both. Actually, you know, our own people sort of in that in that series itself. So it was quite wonderful to see that. But you know, like you said, it was unexpected. It happened to you when you were least expecting it. Um, I mean, working with visionaries like the Wachowskis. I mean, what cinematic, uh, you know, and life insight did you gain from this exposure and experience, especially throughout your experience of working on such a show and acting with such amazing filmmakers like them? well i mean if you want to list it out we'll be going on talking about it for two days because i mean i i to be honest i i worked closely only with lana wachowski um yeah. because uh, lily who who was andy when we started off shooting first sense eight and then uh, she became lily uh, i haven't worked much with uh, lily at all actually to be honest i've done one day of shooting with her uh, on the first season um and uh, but uh, i've worked extensively with lana uh on the mm-hmm. second season and the finale and um i mean this she's a she's a school by herself you know you just you want to go to school film school go to lana and just work with lana wachowski on a project and we we'll, there's so much to learn from her um but i think if this if there's one thing that really stands out is to see how passionate she is for her craft and uh how she pushes and doesn't compromise uh however it may seem to anybody else on the set all involved she doesn't compromise on her vision for something that she has yeah. you know so she just is driven she's tunneled she can see it and she's going for it you know and uh she's so focused on it and 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 working with her is a, is a dream because you know she i don't think she really Uh, is making a series or a film she's really making an art piece you know and she's the artist in the scene with you mm. um you know normally when you're working with the director director sitting on the monitor telling you your action and do this comes and talks to you and do this lana's with you in the scene 
You know, she's in yeah. there. She's in there with the camera. And <laughs> talking to you while the scenes going on it, it's it's really it's like a it's like she's painting the picture you know and you're just you're as an actor you're one of her, her brushes or the stroke of paint that she's put in uh, it's 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 a, it's it's really she, as i said she's like a school to go to work for you know it's really amazing to work with her i can absolutely imagine that and you know what yeah. i can't help but think but it almost seemed like you were like Neo and she was your Morpheus. So did she actually give you any blue pill or red pill <laughs> to choose <laughs> when it came to Sense8? <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, the show Sense8 by itself, um, I think opened up uh, many many minds. And uh, you've seen Sense8, right? I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So quite a path-breaking breaking show for its time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the first season of Sense8 was made in 2015. You yeah, know, it's yeah. a long time ago in, in digital distribution space time because you get new things every month and you move on to the sure. next thing. Yeah. So in 2015, Sense8 One released and uh, I think it, it really was a path breaking show uh, in terms of what it what it spoke about, um, who it represented, what it represented, um, and then the whole aspect of these eight characters, you know, sort of super evolved and I think it's, it's just it's a super brilliant show um, mm-hmm. so I, I think there's a lot to as an actor also you take away a lot from from writing like that you know you say like wow okay wow these are it opens up your mind it opens up your and it's a, a, a writing is again sort of uh, she's she's sort of the captain of the writing ship also for mm. for Sense8 you know and uh, um, you can you, you can see all of that. You can see her through that. You know, through her work, you can really see who she is as a personality and what experiences she is having in her life, and uh, it comes across in her art. So I think uh, I think uh, all of us, all the actors who work with her, take some of that and go. You know. Yeah, I guess now that you've obviously done Sensei, and it is such a great series. I mean. So I guess you must have a lot of like sort of desires and ambitions and goals now to work in the West, right? A lot more prominently. So is there any particular project that you would be very interested uh, in pursuing or any type of character that you'd like to play there um, in particular, or any names that you'd like to work with? Well, yeah, I mean, there's so many names in the West that you want to work with, you know, especially when you've grown up uh, in an area in India, like me watching uh, Western cinema. Yeah. Uh, there's some greats that you definitely want to work with. Um but I mean, so th- there's the, the, the reason I'm here in, in the UK, that's a large part of it is to try and get uh, representation here, which is what I have now yeah. and um, trying to make a presence felt here. Um, but it also has to be the right project, you know, the right project, the right kind of role that you feel will get you out there, get you noticed. So it's people don't know me here, you know, mm. they call me in, I go in. Uh, audition, uh, do things that uh, uh, people who are. I mean, it's it's really nice to feel like because you know when I started off in India, I, I as I said, I didn't really want to be an actor, so I never did any of it. I just sort of went on and started getting work. I feel like I'm living that life now over here. You know, where I come in, mm. I'm I'm longing for people to call me to audition for them. So it's, it's like two sides. In one side, there's India, which there's a lot of work happening and it's coming. And then I have to decide. And my UK agent keeps telling me that, that how long do we have you for? And I say, okay, how long should I not take up work in India to keep a slot for you over here? Right. You know, uh, it's, it's, they, people don't know me here and casting directors don't know me. So I'm, I'm building that and I'm hoping that that translates to something. And, and, and the world is becoming smaller in that sense where with all these digital distributors, uh, content is being made for one platform that's all over the world so i think it's a matter of time that some more exciting western work will come along my my way i'm i'm, I'm positive about it feeling yeah. positive about it um i also read up that your upcoming project um is blind which is obviously produced by sujoy ghosh and mm. it's starring what sonam kapoor which you know i'm quite excited to see her in this avatar to be honest as well and i believe it's an adaptation of uh, the korean film of the same name which again seems to be of a darker shade in comparison to what you know we've seen you do uh, previously in your works as well so i guess what satisfaction do you get as an actor uh, with exploring such shades maybe perhaps in light of blind uh yeah as i said that you're just sort of trying to 
do something different every time, I guess, and and trying to sort of explore paths that you have or, or go down roads in yourself, within yourself that you haven't gone down before. Uh, feel new things. Sometimes some of them are really dark, like as it will be in blind. I won't speak much about blind because uh, I feel it's too early in the day to do that. Mm. And uh, um, also I'm sure there's a release plan for it, which uh, it's, it's, I mean, the film has just got, gotten complete, you know, so we'll, we'll get talking about blind when it's due to release and I can talk much more freely about it. Um, but what I will say that, uh, uh, you know, one of the things I really long for is working with directors and working with interesting directors and people who are seeing you in different light and wanting to explore. And I have to say, so join me been wanting to work with each other right from my brother, Nikhil, because yeah. Because if you see my brother Nikhil closely, Sujoy has played a part in it. He's acted mm-hmm. in my brother. True. And, and we were on the set together and we were having a good time together. And he's like, <laughs> on the cast, you know, film. And there have been times that he's he's called me and he's... Uh, uh, one of the decisions I, I regret is not always... <laughs> <been this. laughs> but, that, but that was not a decision I, I could make because I was working on another project and he wanted me to play a part and I couldn't leave that project and come. So, it's a, so that's not a decision that was in my hand really uh but we've been wanting to work with each other for a long time and then it, on two or three projects discussions were going on but it didn't happen didn't happen didn't happen and then finally typewriter happened and after typewriter i've now worked with him on three projects uh, not him with him as a director but with him as a producer so typewriter he directed and produced but there's bob biswas who i've played a small part in and then there's um, blind now which is going to come next and i think uh uh, uh, not only Sujoy because they are younger directors I've worked within his within his company uh, there's his daughter Dia who I've worked with now and I've worked with Shom Makhija who's the director for Blind and uh, they're, they're a new generation you know they're young they're energetic and they've got these visions of what film should be like and in a new sort of space you know because the world in country is changing in the kind of films it wants to watch uh, it's nice to it's nice to see now, wow, somebody looking at you in that light and especially Shom for Blind. I mean, uh, um, I feel like, because I know Shom for a very long time also. I know him since since he started his career as an assistant director. In fact, he reminded me that I had made a call for him to get a, get a job. So, oh. right, but, but I know Shom for a very long time. I know his father. His yeah. father is, uh, is, uh, is someone I, I know for a while. So I think Shom has uh, taken, he had, he sort of, took some risks, you know, in his first film to, um, uh, and he was quite certain that this is how he wanted the part and this is who he wanted the part to be played by. And uh, this is how he wanted me to play the part, you know, mm. uh, as a first time director, I thought he was quite sort of, you know, there with a strong vision and, and, and clear, more than strong, clear vision of what he wanted. And uh, I think um, as an actor, you you feel safe and you feel comfortable and you feel like, okay, I can explore this now, you know, and I can, I can take it down a path. And you may get things wrong and that's why you have a director to guide you and, and put it straight for you. Absolutely. Well, Urab, I am super, super excited and super thrilled for, you know, the titles <laughs> you mentioned. And I think it's, you know, it's such a sheer joy to watch you on screen. And I think to have a conversation with you is a joy of a different kind and I'm so so glad that you know I know it's been really busy for you but you really made time for this interview and I'm so grateful thank you so much Buddha for joining me on Film Michel it was it was lovely I really enjoyed this a, it's a pleasure it's a pleasure Anuj anytime else you want to talk maybe closer to releases of films and we can do another chat absolutely for sure uh, you know this will be the first of many I hope and I can't wait to catch up with you again and wishing you all the very best and congratulations thank you. once thank again you all right. Ciao. Thank you so much. Thank bye, you. bye, 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 bye. See you.